Budley Heritage Trail was developed by local young people in collaboration with community organisations, local historians and residents. There are three routes, A, B and C, which are accessible to everyone that provide a flavour of the history and heritage of the town. Budley is a wonderful town with its own special place in history. It's been described as the most perfect small Georgian town in Worcestershire. This trail highlights many fascinating features which will help you to discover its heritage. Budley began to grow on the banks of the River Severn as early as the medieval times. There are many unique buildings and interesting features such as the shambles which show the colourful history of the town. Look out for weird street names and unusual sites like No Road and the mysterious stone bird that sits on top of the building in Lode Street. Find the Budley anchor and imagine how the merchants and watermen working hard on the quayside shaped the life of the town today. Follow the River of Words along Sevenside South and look out for the interpretation panels around the trail which will enhance your experience. Budley has been affected by flooding for many years and recently celebrated the completion of a flood defence scheme. It's designed to protect the community, the town and its historical buildings for the raging the River Severn in flood and ensure we continue to enjoy Budley's rich history and cultural heritage. The heritage of Budley goes back as far as medieval times when, in 1304, Bulow, which means beautiful place, was linked to a manor on the west side of the River Severn. The town grew on this important crossing point of the river and became a trading centre, supporting industries such as cloth, leather and rope production. Traders were attracted to Budley because it was close to the Wye Forest and was growing as a significant port. By the middle of the 18th century, Budley had become one of the most important inland ports in the country. The town became a collection centre for bar iron and other goods from Wales and the West, which were then sent overland to Birmingham or downstream to Bristol. The number of Georgian buildings in the town shows the prosperity of this period. The medieval past of Budley can still be seen, however, even though some of the buildings were given elegant Georgian fronts, facades at this time. Budley continued to be a successful market town but its importance as a trading centre declined during the late 18th century with the development of canals and the nearby town of Stourport on Severn. The steam railway built in the 19th century was essential in the development of the district. The 1920s design of Budley Railway Station enhances the rich heritage of the town. The community enjoyed bringing history to life with cultural events that delighted residents and visitors throughout the year. The Guild Hall and Shambles. Many important events have taken place at the Guild Hall, formerly known as the Town Hall. Behind it you'll find the Shambles and Budley Museum with its galleries, exhibitions and arts and crafts workshops. The Civic Space site of an old bridge. The Civic Space is a focal point for the community and is located where the old bridge once stood. The old bridge, built in 1470, was damaged beyond repair in 1795. The Merchant's House. This property is typical of many of the merchant houses funded by the town's ancient river trade. Tannery House and Acorn House are other fine examples of 17th century architecture. Lax Lane. Lax Lane derives its name from the Danish for salmon. Here you'll find the entrance to the beautiful Queen Elizabeth II Jubilee Gardens opposite the Old Boys School sign. Lower Park House. Stanley Baldwin, three times Prime Minister, was born here in 1867. Lower Park also has the Friends Meeting House, 1691, Samuel Sawyer's Arms Houses, 1625, and the Old Rectory, 1760. Cook's Arms Houses. Look out for the inscription to Thomas Cook, who in 
who died in 1698. Along the high street you can see a number of timber framed houses. Number 25 was the former home of Samuel Skye, founder of the first Bewdley Bank in 1760. Methodist Chapel, 1795. Baptist Chapel, 1649. And Catholic Church, 1696. All three churches were set back from the road to comply with the Clarendon Code, a law that only allowed the Anglican faith to be promoted. The Bailiff's House, 1610. The first bailiff, the Mayor of Bewdley, Thomas Boylson, built this elaborate timber-framed house. Its size reflects his important position in the town. Bewdley Institute, 1632. This building was once the Wheat Chief Inn. Here you can see the iron rails for coach wheels. Formerly a political meeting house, it became the Literary and Scientific Institute in 1877 and is now a private club. The Old Post Office. Next door to the Guildhall is another example of a fine timber frame building, 1636. It was used for many years as the Post Office. The George Hotel. During the 19th century, the George Hotel was Bewdley's most important coaching inn. There was a coach to Worcester, which only took two hours, 15 minutes to get there. If you look across the road to the top of the building opposite, you'll see a mysterious stone bird staring out across the town. St Anne's Church. In 1745, architect Thomas Woodward built the church you see today on the site of a 16th century wooden medieval guild and chapel, Welshgate, given its name because it was the road out of Bewdley to Wales and used to have a toll gate. No road. Registered as a public right of way and leads to Bewdley Marketplace. Bewdley's heritage is reflected in its unusual road names. Look out for them as you walk the routes. River Seven. The flood markers indicate the height of the river when in its flood. Look at the interpretation panel for further information. Goods used to be transported along the River Severn, which also provided fish and eels for the local market. Local industries in the past include horn combs, boat making, capping, carpet weaving, rope and twine, baskets and pewter and brass. Coles Quay, now Sevenside North. This was the quay used to load highly coal. Imagine the merchants and watermen agreeing their business deals over a mug of ale in the Mug House Inn. The inn only closed during divine service, Christmas Day and Good Friday, and would stay open as long as there was a bed available. Telford Bridge. Thomas Telford, who was the leading engineer in 1798 when the bridge was built, designed the bridge. The bridge cost £11,000 to build, including the land. Telford Bridge replaced the medieval bridge, which was swept away by floods in 1795. Can you find the Bewdley anchor? Ribbon Hall Quays. All sorts of boats were moored on this busy quayside. Tudor House. This dates back to the mid-1600s and is on Beale's Corner. Local people pronounce it Bales. It was the Bridge Inn before it became a residential property. Look at the interpretation panel for more information. Old Warehouses. Number 8 to 13 Stourport Road were once used to store goods brought in and out of the town along the river. 5, 7 and 9 Stourport Road are the oldest buildings in the town. Huge 14th century roof timbers still remain under the tiles of number 7. Whispering Street, now Westbourne Street. It was possible to catch the plague, or as the locals called it, the pest, in Bewdley during the 17th century. Victims would be buried here in the plague pit. This is also the site of Christ Church and the churchyard built next to the plague pit in 1701. 
Railway Station. Beaudley Station is part of the Seven Valley Railway, which runs steam trains between Kidderminster and Bridge North, and has an important role in British railway preservation. Look at the interpretation panel for more information. Viaduct. The sandstone viaduct carries the railway across the Kidderminster Road towards Bridge North. In 1861, the viaduct's wall collapsed. Luckily, only two workmen were injured. Old rope works. In the 19th and 20th century, rope making was a very important business in Bewdley. It provided work for local people and supplied a range of products to factories, farms and families. Old school. In the 1800s, this was one of two schools in Bewdley. Notice the separate gate entrances, which would be for boys and girls. Pewterer's Alley. Pewter was manufactured in Bewdley from the 16th to the 19th century and was used to make a variety of household goods. During the 18th century, Bewdley was the most important place for pewter making in Britain. Toll House. The Telford Bridge originally had a two-storey octagonal stone toll house. Tolls were collected to contribute towards the cost of building the bridge. The toll house was demolished in 1960. Bewdley offers a variety of great places to eat and drink. There are lots of restaurants, tea rooms and historic pubs, from the relaxed and cosy to the modern and vibrant. Shopping in Bewdley is a blend of old and new. Explore the delightful shops with their specialist and unusual goods and a Saturday market selling fresh local foods. The art galleries and Bewdley Museum provide more heritage and culture. The Seven Valley Railway is very popular and steam trains run regularly through Bewdley following the River Seven. Other local attractions include the Leisure Centre, Rowing Club, Wire Forest Visitor Centre and the West Midlands Safari Park. Bewdley offers a variety of accommodation with a range of hotels, B&Bs and holiday parks. To find out more, please visit the Tourist Information Centre.